Good afternoon, girls. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Good. How are you doing, sweeties? Alhamdulillah. 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 How many of you are in? Okay, only seven attendees so far. Uh, Malikum as salam Arish Fatma. Let me post the meeting details. Do I need to invite anyone to the lesson? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. All right. So let's start the lesson. The other girls might join in, inshallah. Today we'll be talking about the malnutrition and what are the effects of over and under nutrition, which is the malnutrition itself, inshallah. So we are still doing animal nutrition, which is chapter seven from your textbook. And today we will be doing page number 76 and 77, inshallah. So let's start with the words from the Quran, which is related to the various foods which are mentioned in the Quran and how to uh, also consume the foods which have been uh, made halal for us, which is permitted for us to eat and the foods which are forbidden for us to eat. So mostly we should uh, uh, follow the Quran and so and have the foods which provide benefit to us, like the various foods which are uh, uh, ordained for us to eat. Okay, like all the foods like meat and fish and chicken and all which is halal from the protein foods and uh, the forbidden foods like the alcohol and the pork should be avoided and the foods which improve our immunity like honey and black seed and uh, cinnamon and uh, all these things should be included in our diet in China. The objectives of the topic today would be to describe the effects of malnutrition in relation to starvation, constipation, coronary heart disease, obesity and scurvy. All right, ladies, and to explain the causes and effects of vitamin D and iron deficiencies, and we will also discuss about the causes and effects of protein and energy malnutrition, which might lead to diseases like Kvashiorkor and Erasmus. So who's going to recap the contents uh, covered in the last lesson? We were discussing about the energy needs in the last lesson, isn't it? Can, quick, uh, can someone quickly recap the contents we covered? Who wants to do it? Please raise your hand. I'm good, alhamdulillah, Arish Fatma. Yes, ladies, who wants to do it? Tala, would you like to do it? Tala Mansoor? Yes, miss. You want to go ahead? Tala? Shall I recap? Yes, please. Um, so the energy that energy intake depends on um, the person's age and their gender and their activities or job. Mm -hmm. The they take the energy from food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how does the body use it? Um, it's used the functions for the for the organs to function. Yes, for the organs to function, the various metabolic activities to take place. Right. So, how do we calculate the energy requirement per day? Read out from the slide, Tala. Tala. Energy requirements per day equals the BMR plus activity plus dynamic action of food. 
Very good. Now, who's going to tell me what is BMR? Quickly read out the, read out the definition from the slide here. What is BMR? Basal metabolic rate. Yes, Sarah. What is the definition of basal metabolic rate? Um, it's basically the energy that is used up even when you're not doing anything, you're sleeping or you're resting. Very good. The energy used by the body for, to perform the functions even when you're at rest. Now, who's going to explain what is dynamic action of food? Ravasan, would you like to explain? Mariam Nata? Ms. Ravasan responded in the chat. Okay, Ravasan has written in the chat. Uh, okay, but my mic isn't working. Okay, never mind, Ravasan. Jumana, would you like to explain? Um, the specific dynamic uh, action or dynamic action of food is like it's it's the energy that uh, that it, what energy the energy that it takes to break up food for uh, for basic needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what is the dynamic action of food for carbohydrates? It's seven percent. Right, Jumana, meaning seven calories are required out of the 100 calories of carbohydrates in order to break down and digest them, isn't it? And is the uh, SDA of carbohydrates more or less than fats? More. More. More or less? <laughs> is it less for fats or carbohydrates? The SDA for carbohydrates is less, providing the body with more usable calories, whereas the SDA for fats is more, which is 12 calories, uh, which uh, keeps only 88 usable calories uh, from the fats for our body. Okay, so SDA of fats is more compared to carbohydrates. Thank you so much, Jumana. And we also discussed about the diet, how it depends on age, sex, and activity. We discussed that uh, the men, because of their body mass, they need more uh, energy, so the energy requirement is more. And also the energy requirement or the diet, it depends on the activity you do. Uh, and elderly people, they don't need a lot of energy and protein because they are uh, at a stage where and there is the activity has lowered. Also, the growth function for the protein is uh, impaired now after a uh, growing age uh, protein is only required for repair and maintenance in the body so uh, generally for elderly people the energy requirement is less uh, we were also discussing about how the energy requirements increase during pregnancy and breastfeeding for a woman because she needs to have extra energy now and need to, need, needs more nutrients now to cater for the growing baby and also for the production of milk during lactation Clear, ladies, about all this we discussed in the last lesson? Did we discuss this as well? About how much more energy is required by a pregnant woman than the normal woman? Yes. Yeah. The pregnant woman needs 0.8 megajoules more energy than the 9 megajoules recommended for a non-pregnant woman. All right, then we were discussing about the dietary importance of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Isn't it? Are we done with all three ladies? Did we discuss the uh, dietary importance of lipids and proteins as well in the last lesson? Yes, I think we did, yes. We did, right? All right. So here is uh, the, the dietary importance of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, as we already discussed about this in our chapter 3 or 4, I believe, uh, and, and the biological molecules. So here we have the sources of all the three main nutrients, the functions they carry out in the, in the human body, and also how they are digested in the body. All right, till here we finished the last lesson. So here you can see the sources of proteins. Did we start uh, studying about this obesity in anorexia nervosa? Or no? We talked about it by very We just started about it, is it? 
Okay. Okay, ladies. So now today we are going to talk about malnutrition, and as we discussed about it, malnutrition could be either overnutrition, which might lead to obesity, or undernutrition, which is uh, literally starvation or uh, uh, the amount of nutrients which are needed for the body are not available, which might lead to many serious conditions, retarding of the growth, and also uh, not. Uh, uh not proper functioning of the brain and other organs in the body okay so as you can see both the conditions over here of overnutrition and also undernutrition so malnutrition is a result of not eating a balanced diet uh so there may be either wrong amount of food which is either too little or too much so it is the incorrect proportion of the consumption of the nutrients as we discussed in the definition of a balanced diet that the need nutrients which are needed for the body should be available in correct amounts so why did we use the term correct in the balanced diet mean meaning according to the needs of the body so if this intake of nutrients is in a in an incorrect proportion if it is more or less it might cause deficiency diseases and various other problems related to it so if it is too little food it may cause starvation okay it might uh, it might lead to especially uh, starvation happens in the poor the countries which are poor financially where in the people in those countries do not have enough food to eat so such uh, people and especially growing children who who need to include a lot of nutrients in their diet they are malnutrition and undernutrition in due to which they get many conditions like wash yorker and marasmus which are protein and carbohydrate deficiency diseases okay but there is another condition which might be experienced by people though they have enough food to eat uh, there is a condition known as anorexia nervosa in which especially the people who are in the fashion industry or the people who are in the uh, entertainment industry who want to always remain fit okay so they have a sense of feeling that though they are fit when they look at themselves in the mirror they feel as if they are very fat due to which they starve for days together okay so this is a medical condition known as anorexia nervosa in which the patients they are men not mentally stable they feel as if they are very very fat so they starve and after starving for 4 to 5 days they start gulping the food so they start eating after remain after not eating for 4 to 5 days so when they start eating the food the body it rejects the food and they start vomiting so they eat and again in the intervals of eating and non eating it continues ultimately the body is devoid of nutrition altogether so such a condition of starvation is known as anorexia nervosa let me show you the pictures of the patient suffering from such disease okay so can you see this girl over here she is perfectly uh, meaning she is from a rich family so there is nothing like she is starving due to poorness or unavailability of the food so though the food is available so this is how the person is when he looks himself in the mirror uh, he looks as if he is very fat okay and then he starts starving himself and this is how the people with anorexia nervosa look like so they need to be uh, counseled they need to go to a psychologist and uh, many psychological sessions should be conducted in order to bring them back to the normal state so this is a condition known as anorexia nervosa ladies any questions so this will come under under nutrition or over nutrition ladies so it is a, yes. a situation of undernutrition right now uh, on the other hand too much food particularly the fatty food like today's young generation is mostly obese why due to the consumption of did we discuss this yesterday ladies do let me know if it did already because uh, you know i take at least two sections sometimes it might be a repetition did we discuss this yesterday or no Jumana. no no right yeah great okay no, so uh, especially the junk food the fats which are unhealthy fats if you're consuming them a lot in the form of french fries in the form of donuts uh, pizzas uh, albake all these are deeply fried foods which contain lots lots of fats in them 
okay and if you're having a lot of desserts which contain a lot of cream and cheese in it so all this accumulates in your body in the form of unhealthy fat okay it might lead to obesity you can obesity is the your weight is much more than your average weight should be according to your height okay so once you're obese once your weight is more it might lead to many other medical conditions the first thing is when your body is uh, heavy you will not move as actively as a fit person does okay so your metabolism becomes slow and your activity becomes slow you just want to sit down sit down or lie down and you know even if you do a little work you feel very tired so this leads to putting on of more weight once you are above a certain weight you just keep on adding uh, it just keep, keeps on adding on to it because you become very lazy uh, so your calories are not burning you're not active at all now so the weight is accumulating and you're putting on and on so this might lead to serious conditions like coronary heart disease or strokes or uh, due to your body weight your knees they become very very weak and you might get joint pains and various other conditions all right so we'll discuss in detail uh, as to what happens when you get the coronary heart disease and uh, all these are the medical complications because of your overweight which is known as obesity okay and then one more condition of malnutrition is one common form of malnutrition is kwashior okay so you can see the boy in this picture who is pot bellied okay his belly is is like a pot though his rest of the body is very very thin and under nutrition isn't it so this is a disease which is caused by a lack of protein in the diet though you're including a lot of carbohydrates but if there is no protein in the diet which is very very important for the growing children then you will get this disease known as kwashiorkor uh, it is most common in children between the ages of 9 months and 2 years after they have stopped feeding on the mother's milk for the breast milk also provides the baby with a lot of uh, protein but once the baby stops feeding uh, then the protein will be lacking in the body especially for poor children uh, in poor countries where protein food is they cannot afford the protein rich food uh, so it is often caused by poverty because their family do not have any high protein food to give to, uh, to the child and children suffering from kwashiorkor are always underweight for their age okay so you think this condition will continue or it can be treated if the if the child is again brought back to a, a balanced diet and if it is given if the child is given a high protein diet again can he become normal yes yes yes, yes of course yes the child he can be treated this condition can be treated if the child uh, is again brought back to the nutritious food and has given enough protein in his diet within a few months the child can be brought back to the uh, normal health and he will be growing normally so he just needs to include enough protein in his diet uh, Uh, but they may often look quite fat because their diet may contain a lot of carbohydrates so though they, they are eating uh, but they are including lots of carbohydrates in their diet due to which they might look uh, their stomach looks like this pot bellied but actually the the body is devoid of the proteins which are required for the growth so if they are again put on to a high protein diet they usually begin to grow normally again okay ladies so one more condition for uh, for malnutrition which we are going to discuss now is uh, the condition known as marasmus as you can see the child sitting on the chair who is very very lean uh, so this marasmus it is not only a protein deficiency but also a protein carbohydrate deficiency in the diet meaning the child is not at all eating properly uh maybe due to poverty or maybe due to any other condition like intolerance of the foods because normally the children uh have lactose intolerance which is intolerance to the milk protein or maybe intolerance to gluten in the wheat or due to any other digestive problems or intolerances okay so the most severe forms of malnutrition result from the lack of both protein and carbohydrate which is energy in the diet and severe shortage of energy in the diet causes marasmus in which a child has body weight which is much lower than normal and he looks emaciated so in this condition not only the bo- the child's body is weak also his brain is getting affected 
Why? Because the brain, it needs a constant supply of glucose to function properly. And in this condition, even the carbohydrates are uh, deficient in his uh, diet. So the brain, it does not get enough uh, glucose. So the child may be uh, retarded as well. And in embarrassment, the child has symptoms of general starvation. There is not enough energy, uh, not enough food, not enough protein in his diet. So all the body tissues waste away and the child becomes very thin. What do you understand by the term all the body tissues waste away? They mm -hmm. yes. they go away. They they go away. They're being used up, I think, or just they walks away. Well, the you the body tissue. Yes, I think that's what yeah. it means. Yeah, because the fat is deposited under our skin in the form of adipose tissue, which normally gives us insulation and forms a fatty layer around the skin, right? So this fatty layer is also used up now because the baby is starving and he needs energy for his daily activities. So all this fat, it is being used or being wasted to provide the body, the baby with the energy. And that is how the body tissue is wasted and ultimately the child becomes very, very weak and thin as again. Uh, see in this picture here. All right, ladies. Now let's talk about the uh, any questions so far regarding marasmus or kwashi worker or uh, anorexia nervosa. All clear, ladies? You can ask me if you have any questions. Clear? Yes. Miss, I don't understand that uh, who shares disease as much as marasms. Quashiorker? Yes. Okay. Quashiorker is only a protein deficiency disease. Okay. So the child is eating, but he's eating only carbohydrates in his diet. He's not getting enough protein. What is the main function of protein in the diet? In, in our body, what is the function of protein, especially in the growing children? It allows you to grow, heals uh, yeah. muscles or damaged yes. tissues. Very good. So the, uh, the function of protein is growth, repair and maintenance. So in this child's body, that function is being impaired because there is no protein in his diet. So he is only filling his stomach and is only killing his hunger uh, and getting satiety only from the carbohydrates. So when he is eating lots of rice or uh, the wheat or only the carbohydrate rich foods in his diet, his belly becomes too big as if he is very fat but actually he is very very lean and thin and his body is not growing as it should grow okay so such a condition is known as quashy orchid in which the child is underweight and uh, mostly the functions which are carried out by the proteins in his body are not being carried out Though he has a little energy for his daily activities because he's having carbohydrates in his diet, but as there are no proteins, he is not growing as it should grow and the body is not functioning as it should function. That is why the, the belly is protrusing out in the form of a pot here. But this condition can be again uh, treated if the child is brought back to the high protein diet then the child's body will start growing again and again the, the baby would be uh, balanced uh, meaning healthy once he has a balanced diet. Clear Speedy? Yes, Any more questions? You. You're most welcome. Any more questions before we move ahead? All clear? Yes. Ladies. Okay. So let's talk about the effects of obesity now. Okay. So to eating too much food makes you obese. No doubt about it. Uh, sometimes, uh, most of the time, 70 to 80 percent times is only if you're eating too much than the requirements of the body, you will put on more weight. But tw sometimes 20 percent may be due to any uh, any hormonal imbalance in your body, like if the thyroid gland, gland secretions are more, it might lead to hyperthyroidism in which you will put on weight even if you're not eating. All right. So it would be only because of 20% of any hormonal imbalance, but mostly if you're eating a lot, 
more than what you need, then you will turn obese. So obesity is very bad because it might lead to many dangerous conditions like coronary heart disease, uh, strokes, and also diabetes. Okay, diabetes is the high blood sugar levels in the body, uh, which also can make you blind. And diabetes is a very serious disease which might cause fluctuations in your uh, blood uh, sugar levels and also in the blood pressure. Let's talk about the coronary heart disease and these diseases in detail now. Okay, so people who take in more energy than they use up, they get fat. Yeah, either you have to eat according to your needs or even if you're eating extra, you need to exercise accordingly. You need to have a very active lifestyle, lifestyle to burn those extra calories. Okay, so being very fat is known as obesity or you are generally uh, 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 told that you are obese. Obesity is dangerous to health. Why? Because obese people are more likely to get uh, heart disease, strokes and also diabetes. What is the difference between heart disease and a stroke, ladies? Strokes are like a one-time thing. Stroke are like what? Could you repeat, please? Honestly, don't know. Do Sorry, you know, strokes are not a permanent thing. Not permanent. Strokes are not. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They could come often and go away as soon as they come. Meaning they are also related to the heart, you mean? Yeah, strokes are related to the brain. Yeah, strokes are not related to the heart, they are related to the brain. Okay, uh, coronary heart disease is a disease in which the arteries are blocked with the cholesterol, the excess amount of cholesterol which you are eating. Due to the circulation in the heart, uh, the blood does not circulate between the heart and the rest of the body. There is blockage due to which you get a heart attack. Okay, so if, uh, the heart attack, if you are uh, treated on time, uh, you can survive and it can be treated. And these days we have many treatments. Uh, you, uh, the patients are given blood thinners and there's angiography which is done due to which the blockage can be removed. But if this blockage is very serious, even an open heart surgery can be done. Okay, so this is about the heart disease. Whereas stroke is something which is related to the brain. Okay, so when the flow of the blood is not proper in the heart itself. If the blood, it forms a clot in the nerves of the brain, then it will lead to a stroke. As you can see in this picture, the blood clot, it lodges in the cerebral artery causing a stroke. So this is more severe than a heart attack because whenever you have a stroke, it might either lead to immediate death or uh, your body might be partially or completely paralyzed because brain is the main controlling uh, fact, uh, the controlling uh, place of your entire body, isn't it? If any one of the nerves in your brain, uh, they get blocked, you will get a stroke and it might lead to, uh, you might either go to a coma or your body might get paralyzed or uh, any one of the... What was it, ladies? Who was it? What's going on? Go away, say Srabhasan. What goes away, Srabhasan? You're talking about the stroke? Okay, no, she mind. she's fixed out of the tissue. When it wasted away in the mouth. Ah, okay, okay, right, right, right. Thank you so much. Please put your mics on mute, ladies. I don't want any disturbance, okay? So this is what uh, happens in a stroke, ladies, okay? Stroke is related to the brain. Uh, so uh, your brain functioning will uh, be, you might faint at regular intervals or you might go to a coma or uh, God forbid, there can be any type of uh, permanent uh, uh, disorder in your body if you get a stroke, okay? So there can be two types of strokes. Again, we shall discuss about it in detail in further in our topics. 
So for now, I was uh, telling you that stroke is entirely different from a heart disease. It is re related to the brain. And we all know what is diabetes. It is uh, the blood sugar level when it is high in the body. It is known as a condition known as diabetes. It can be either insulin dependent diabetes or insulin non-dependent diabetes. Uh, meaning uh, if it is insulin dependent, then this particular hor uh, the, uh, hormone insulin, it is not made in your body. And you might have to take insulin injections before each and every meal in order to control your blood sugar levels in the body. Okay. So these are all the, uh, uh, the dangers of obesity. One more uh, danger is the extra weight which is placed on the legs can cause problems with the joints, especially the knees. Because due to excess weight, your body is unable to carry your body's weight and you might get joint pains or knee pains, etc. So most people can control their weight by eating normal, well-balanced meals and taking regular exercises. So today uh, you have many, many uh, meal plans and nutritionists and dietitians who can help you with losing weight. So if you are overweight, you need to immediately check on your weight and come back to normal. You can exercise and gradually decrease your intake of food and you can uh, uh, reduce weight and bring it back to normal. Because uh, there are, you have many examples of also famous celebrities and you must have examples in your family and your society around wherein uh, they have lost weight and set an example for you. Okay, so it's not something which is impossible. If you are strong willed, uh, if you are obese, definitely you can uh, come back to normal, but you should not do go on a crash diet. Uh, you cannot lose weight within two to three days by just starving yourself. That is a wrong way to do it. So if you want to cut down your weight, then you need to gradually change your diet. Include lots and lots of salads and fruits instead of uh, foods rich in high fat. Cut down on the intake of fats. Cut down on the quantity of the food and exercise accordingly. And definitely gradually you will lose weight. All right, ladies. Uh, so let, now let's discuss about the coronary heart disease. So this is how your artery looks like when it is blocked, uh, when it is co uh, the cholesterol gets deposited in your arteries. They narrow and the circulation of the blood it uh, will not take place as it normally does. So this is how your normal artery looks like and this is how your blocked artery looks like. Okay, so this is due to the cholesterol deposit in your arteries. So if you're including too much saturated fat in your diet, saturated fat meaning animal fat like red meat, beef, and also too much of animal fat like butter, cheese in your diet, then uh, it results in increase of cholesterol levels in your body. Okay, then this cholesterol, it can stick to the walls of your arteries gradually blocking them. So if coronary arteries become blocked, the results can be angina and coronary heart disease. So angina is a block which can be removed. Okay, so it is not as serious as a coronary heart disease. And coronary heart disease is a total block. Uh, uh, and if the patient is smoking on top of it, then this cholesterol, it becomes hardened and, and calcified, meaning now the person uh, needs to be operated in order to remove this block. And if the patient already has two to three blocks, not only one, then it might be a more serious condition. Okay, so here, as you can also see in this picture, this is how slowly the artery blocks completely because of the deposition of the fat like this. Uh, the kind of fat found in animal foods is known as the saturated fat. And this fat should be avoided after a certain age. Okay, because the foods uh, which contain saturated fat, they contain a lot of cholesterol and some research suggests that people who eat a lot of saturated fat and cholesterol are more likely to get heart disease than people who do not. Okay, so uh, being, if you're a vegetarian, that's the best thing. Uh, but though you're a non-vegetarian, especially in your age, in growing age, yes, you can definitely include lots and lots of protein and saturated fat like meat, beef and all. Because uh, you need protein in this stage for growth and you can also have fat and burn it because your lifestyle is very active and you're uh, doing a lot of exercise. But after a certain age like 35 and above, you should gradually cut down on the in, in, uh, intake of the saturated fat. 
okay you you need to include little little portions of uh, saturated fat like red meat and beef and uh, uh, other uh, butter and, and 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 cheese and all such heavy foods but you can definitely have the seafood fish which is very good chicken is also good all these are white meat and we need to include lots and lots of vegetable oils in the diet like olive oil and corn oil all these are unsaturated fats which can be digested easily okay ladies so this is because uh, fat deposit builds up on the inside of the arteries like in the picture making them stiffer and narrower and if this happens in the coronary arteries supplying the heart muscle with the blood then not enough blood can get through and the heart muscles run short of oxygen and cannot work properly so when your heart muscles cannot work properly your heart gets weaker so your circulation is not proper so this weakening of the heart might lead to a heart attack okay and this disease is known as coronary heart disease wherein your heart is very very weak clear ladies any question so far miss yeah miss yes uh ravasan asked a question in the chat box uh huh um thank you coming me yeah what is the question okay teacher i have a question which is more dangerous malnutrition or improper nutrition ravasan you think malnutrition or improper nutrition are different because improper nutrition is also having serious health effects which one is more dangerous and why yes improper nutrition gradually leads to malnutrition right ravasan so when uh, malnutrition is under or over nutrition which is caused due to the improper nutrition in your diet if you are either lacking in the amount of nutrients uh, that is also bad and if your excess intake is excess uh, that is also bad so improper means incorrect uh, intake of food both are one and the same but the more serious condition of improper nutrition is malnutrition when you start showing the deficiency symptoms of the either uh, deficit of the nutrients or excess of nutrients okay uh, so ravasan both are serious so, so uh, slowly you will start start showing the symptoms so if you are just having an improper diet for a short period of time and then you are coming on again you're back on to the balanced meal and you are uh, within 2 3 months you are shifting back to the normal diet then uh, that will not harm you but if it continues for longer periods of time then it will lead to malnutrition then you will start showing the deficiency symptoms uh you might turn anemic you might turn weak and lethargic also if you are excess in nutrients then you might turn obese and that obesity will lead to many other dangerous conditions uh is the question answered ravasan yes she says okay thank you any any more questions ladies any more doubts or questions Okay, the time is almost up. It's twelve fifty-three, so we should discuss the rest of the. Yes. Could you repeat? Can okay, I have a question? question? Sorry, Jumana. Is it healthy? I I heard obese people um uh, go to go to surgery, and make their stomachs uh, smaller. Is it is it healthy? No, not at all. They are trying to remove the fat in their body. Okay. Uh, though there are, uh, there are, we've heard of the success of these surgeries, but ultimately, uh, if you're not checking on your diet, then it might lead to many health hazards. So you can just cannot get operated and get removed. Uh, the excess fat fat cannot be removed from your body. You just have to change your entire lifestyle. Okay. So instead of that, if you do it yourself by exercising regularly and changing your diet altogether, you will not only uh, uh, get a self a feeling of self confidence, and also you are achieving something in which you will continue to follow a very nutritious diet after that for the rest of your life. But if you are trying to just uh, uh, look for alternatives which are easier but also dangerous. 
okay for some people the operation might be successful if you are young and can uh, recover easily but if you are above 35 or 40 and if you are getting such procedures done i don't suggest at all that is total disaster and the best way to is to exercise and switch on to the healthy diet okay so that you will not only set an example for yourself you are more confident now that you have done it and you have achieved it and also the people around you will look at you and start having a very healthy lifestyle isn't it ajumano yes miss thank you you're most welcome any more questions ladies okay let me assign the homework then for the weekend i want you all to you already completed question 7.1 i believe most of you have sent me the homework the ones who did not may also complete it and for the weekend the homework would be uh, from question number 7.2 to 7.6 what all we discussed uh, i believe we discussed only till 7.4 now we didn't do the deficiency diseases Uh, which are the vitamin and mineral deficiency diseases which we'll do in the next class inshallah so here is your homework you can do from question number 7.2 to question number 7.4 page number 78 clear ladies also complete your mlg assignments they are uploaded and uh, all the other uh, these uh, what you say resources are uploaded on the teams i will upload more worksheets for you over the weekend